Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and this is question number eight from the Pure Mathematics P2 International A Level at Excel, October 2021 session. And in this question, um, we have basically a sketch of a curve which is called C, and it has given us the equation of the curve, which is y equals 4 over 3x cubed minus 11x squared plus kx, where k is a constant. The point M is a maximum turning point um, of the curve C, and is shown in figure 2. Given that the x coordinate of M is 2, show that k equals 28. Okay. So now we've got to show that k is equal to 28 given that the turning point here is um, the x coordinate of this point is 2. Okay, so this is 2 something. 2, call it 2ym, right? That's the y coordinate, the x and the y coordinate of m. We don't know the y coordinate, we know the x coordinate. Okay, so the turning point, that's the uh, clue, clue here, the turning point of a curve is when the gradient is zero. So let's find dy dx first in terms of k, and then we can try to figure this out. So we say dy dx, the differential of this, everything's ready to be differentiated, nothing needs to be changed. All the powers are, all the x's on the numerator, there's no third form, it's fine. So we can just multiply by the power and take one from the power. So it'll be three times four over three. The threes will cancel if you with four, take one from the power x squared, 2 times minus 11, which is negative 22, take one from the power, leave you with just x power 1, and k times x, well, you multiply, you drop the x, basically. Multiply by the power becomes x power 0, left with just plus k. And we know at m, at m, we know dy dx is equal to 0. We know the gradient is equal to 0, so we can, we know that, at m also x is equal to 2. So you know at the point m x is equal to 2 and dy dx is equal to 0. So we can substitute 0 into here instead of x. Sorry, 2 into here instead of x and equate it to 0. So 4 times 2 squared minus 22 times 2 plus k and we know that's equal to 0. So when x equals 2 the gradient is equal to 0 and therefore we can now find what k is pretty simply. That's 4 times 4, which is 8, minus 44, um, plus, sorry, what am I doing? talking about? That's 4 times 4, which is 16, minus 44, plus k equals 0, and 16 minus 44 is going to be minus 28. Just to confirm, 16 minus 24, minus 44, sorry. <clears throat> is negative 28, that's right, so k minus 28 equals 0, so k is equal to 28 as required. So we found that k is equal to 28, that's what we had to show. Alright, so there's the answer to part A. Now, <clears throat> we're going to move on to part B. Okay, now it says, determine the range of values of x for which y is increasing. So we need, again, to find, um, you know, when is it increasing? Let's just take this... Um, I'm just going to get the image. Okay, so this is an increasing function when the gradient is positive. When the gradient is positive. So we got to find when the gradient is positive. Now we already differentiated this. And we got dy dx equals, it was 4x squared minus 22x. And we had plus k, which is 28 now. You know that is 28. So this is the gradient function for this curve. And we want to find the range of values of y for which the gradient is positive. It's increasing when the gradient is positive. So that's what we need to find. We need to find the range of values of y for which dy dx, the range of values of x for which dy dx is greater than zero. That's when it's increasing. Okay. Um, some schools of thought say say also greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So if you put greater than, than zero or you put greater than or equal to zero, both are acceptable depending on which, uh, you know, which opinion you follow the 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 school the the book pp2 book um i think had greater than equal to some people just use greater than the examining board accepts both so you can say greater than zero for an increasing function you can say greater than or equal to zero for an increasing function both of them are acceptable so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take the 
uh, gradient function, which is 4x squared minus 22x plus 28. And I'm going to solve the inequality where this is greater than 0. So what I can do first, I can divide everything by 2 to make it easier. Dividing by 2 doesn't affect the inequality sign. The numbers are smaller now. Now I have to solve this quadratic inequality. I have to find the solutions for this quadratic inequality. And then, um, you know, we can work that out. Now, we can do that actually in two ways. Okay, we could, we could do it in two ways. Because basically, I know it's increasing when x is less than 2. Okay, and it's also increasing when x is greater than this value. I'm going to call it x. I'm going to call it x1. I'm going to this value over here. Okay, now you can see after this is going to be increasing again. And this is a cubic curve. So this is a maximum turning point and this is a minimum turning point. So I've got two options here. So I've just kind of changed my strategy in the middle of doing it. Because I can solve this quadratic inequality and that's fine. I can solve it and I can get, um, you know, a solution. But I can also, I can take what I, I got before when I got dy dx. And I could uh, making it equal to zero. So it's actually it's the same thing. It's actually going to be the same thing. I can make this equal to zero. So 2x squared minus 11x minus 11x plus 14. I'm going to find out when it's equal to zero. And I know one of the places it equals, equals zero when, when, is when x equals 2. So one of the solutions to this is x minus 2. So the other solution I can find quite easily because I know I have to have a 2 here because this is going to be 2x squared. And I have to have a, a, a 14 here, so that must be minus 7. If I expand this, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get that because that's what you have to multiply by x minus 2 to get that. So you're going to have 2x squared minus 7x minus 4x plus 14. So we, we see the two solutions to this are x equals 2 and x equals 7 over 2. So x equals 3.5. So this is the value here. So we can see from the graph without having to, if we had solved this inequality, we would have got the same, basic, we would have got the same thing. We would have said, first, let's find the critical values, which are x equals 2 and x equals 3.5. Then we would have, have made a sketch of this, saying that it opens upwards, okay, and um, these are the critical values. It opens upwards, it goes down like this. Where is it? Where is the gradient positive? Where is the gradient positive? The gradient is positive when the gradient function is above the x-axis, so it's between 2 and um, when, it, when, when the gradient function is above the x-axis, so it's when x is less than 2 and x is greater than 3.5. That's what we would have found. This, these are parts where the gradient is positive, meaning where the gradient function, which this is, is greater than 0. What we've done in this other method here is we found the turning points. One of the turning points is x equals 2, which we found earlier. The other turning point is x equals 3.5. And we can see from the graph, because this is a maximum turning point and this is a minimum turning point, and it is a cubic curve, so it's going to continue going up and up like this. The places where the gradient is going to be positive are when x is less than 2 and when x is greater than 3.5. Those are the, po the, the range of values of x where it's going to be going upwards. Okay, the gradient will be positive. Between 2 and 3.5, it's going to be a decreasing function. It's going to go down. Okay, so that's how we can um, solve this problem. A couple of ways we can think about it. We can solve this inequality, find out when the gradient is, is greater than zero that way. Or we can say we know this turning point is 2. We can work out what this turning point is as well by factorizing this. And um, those are the two turning points. We know m is the maximum turning point. The other one must be the minimum. And we can see how the graph is turning. So we can determine x is less than 2 and x is greater than 3.5 as the range of values for which this is an increasing function. The range of y, values of y for which or x for which y is increasing. So there's the answer to part b. And now we're going to move on to part c. Now, it says here, the line L passes through m and is parallel to the x-axis. Okay, so this m lambda is 2 something. I'll just call it 2y. All right, so this is the point 2 here. Um, and the region R is bounded by the curve C, the line L, and the y-axis. Find by algebraic integration the exact area of R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little line here uh, between M 
and the x-axis okay between m and the x-axis okay so there's two that should be over here all right and i'm going to try to find the area under the curve between 0 and 2 which is this area here and i'm going to subtract that area from the area of this rectangle and i'll find the area that we need so in order to do that i need to find what this line is so i can work out the height of this triangle this rectangle this rectangle so i know the point m is on this horizontal line okay so if i find the y coordinate of m then this will be the the, the y equals you know um, that will be the height of the rectangle basically so i can find the area of this rectangle and therefore i can continue to find the re the r that i need so i know that this, that uh, this is on the line m when x equals 2 we got the y coordinate of m so we have our original equation if i substitute 2 into this original equation it will give me the y value of the point where m um, where m is basically so we're going to have y equals 4 over 3 times 2 cubed minus 11 times 2 squared and remember 28 uh, k was 28 plus 28 times 2 that's going to give us our y value so it's 4 times 8 which is 32 over 3 minus 11 times 4 which is 44 plus 28 times 2 which is going to be 56 so you're gonna just, just stick this in the calculator to make life easier you have 32 over 3 minus 44 plus 56 make sure we do everything right that gives us 68 over 3 so y is equal to 68 over 3. So this is the equation of this line is y equals 68 over 3. I'll leave it in that form for now. So now we need to find the area of the rectangle here. So we can say the region R is going to be equal to 68 over 3 times 2 minus the integral of between the limits of 0 and 2, the curve, which is given by 4 over 3, 4 over 3x cubed minus 11x squared uh, plus 28x. And we've got to integrate that with respect to x, and we're going to get our answer. So that's going to be 120, 136 over 3 minus the integral between the, well, I'm going to integrate it now. So I'm going to write this. Once you integrate it, you put your brackets like this. So you add 1 to the power, divide by the power. So it's 4x to the power 4 over 12. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put over 3 times 4, and we'll see that that cancels out with that. Maybe put that neater. I'll just simplify it in the next step. So 4x to the power 4 divided by 3 times 4. <coughs> just make it a bit neater than that. Then you have minus 11x cubed over new power 3 plus 28x, sorry, 28x squared over 2. And the limits for this are from 0, from 2 to 0. Okay, so now we can simplify this a little bit. The 4 cancel with the 4, the 2 with the 28. So we're left with 136 over 3 minus, this is going to be x to the power 4 over 3, minus 11x cubed over 3 again, plus 14x squared. Now we're ready to put those values in. So we have 136 over 3, minus, now I've put 2 in here, I'm going to add 2 to the power 4, which is 16 over 3, minus 11 times 8, which is 88 over 3. plus 14 times 4, that's uh, 40 plus 16, 56. Is that right? 4, 40 plus 4, yeah, 16, so that's 56. And I'm going to take away from that basically 0, because if we put 0 in all of these, they'll become 0. And now I've got my level. We should, get, we should be able to get an answer from this. So let's just put this in the calculator now. 136 over 3 minus we got 16 over 3 whoops what am I doing 
minus bracket 16 over 3 um, and take away 88 over 3 um, plus 56 Okay, that's, I guess, it. And that gives us 40 over 3. So that means region R is 40 over 3 square units. And there's the answer to this part of the question. So this is all R. Okay, so we found the area under the curve, which is this area between 0 and 2. That's what this part represents. Okay. Integrate between 0 and 2, you find the area between the curve and the x-axis between these two limits. And we found the area of this whole rectangle, which was the height of the rectangle, uh, as we mentioned, which is 68 over 3, from there to there, times 2, which gives you 136 over 3. That's the area of the whole thing. You subtract the area of the curve from the area of the whole rectangle. You're left with the area above the curve, in that, um, up to that line. So there we have the answer to part C of this question, and I think that was all of question 8. Yes, it was. So there we've done question 8 now. Um, question about a few different things. Um, differentiation, increasing and decreasing functions. Um, what else did we have? Part A was all about what? I've forgotten how already. All right, differentiation, I guess, m maximum and minimums. So it's differentiation and integration, basically. So other questions from this paper that you want to watch should be found in this playlist that will appear over here. Other questions to do with, say, differentiation, I'll put in this link, to P2 differentiation in this link. P2 integration questions will be found clicked in this link over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. So I'm in the middle. Thank you for watching and see you soon.